بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وعملا وقربا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وأثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا وارض عنا يا أرحم الراحمين okay. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I pray you all well um, <coughs> So yesterday we looked at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proving that he could create he's created everyone he's created the earth and everything on it for us and he's asking the disbelievers how how could you disbelieve in Allah after what he's done for you you didn't exist he brought you into existence and he's gonna you know he's, he's gonna give you death which is a means to get into the next life eternal happiness that's the blessing imagine if no one died on earth it was all crowded right and then on top of that he's saying you know and then you're going to be returned to him and you're going to be questioned on you know why you didn't believe in him so you know subhanahu wa ta'ala so what is wrong with you right so then we we have today's ayat you know next we see وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً and mention O Messenger of Allah right the translation here most translators do this um, which is a problem you know they say O Muhammad right Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't address he, yes he says Muhammad he names him you know, بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى Muhammad right in Surah Muhammad Allah mentions him by name but whenever he speaks right to whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the messenger of Allah <coughs> he he says um oh messenger of Allah um ya ayyuhar rasul ya ayyuhan nabi ya ayyuhal muzammil ya ayyuhal mudathir it's a title right so mentioning his name is correct so or mention to them oh messenger of Allah when your lord said to the angels indeed i will make upon the earth a successive authority khalifa we we'll talk about this they said uh, will you place upon it one who causes corruption therein and sheds blood while we declare your praise and sanctif sanctify you? Allah says, uh, Allah said, indeed, I know that which you do not know. So, <clears throat> these ayat, what's happening here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the disbelievers, you know, um, here's another reason for you to believe in me, right? I honored you. I honored your ancestor and I honored you, uh, th through him I honored you I honored your entire species I've given you such qualities that <clears throat> the angels don't have right the potential that we have as human beings to be slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the highest thing you can be in the Quran whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the messenger of Allah uh, whenever he speaks about the Messenger of Allah in the highest praise, it's always Abd. Alhamdulillah, ladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab. All praise belongs to the one who, and to Allah who revealed to his slave, his servant, the book. And when he talks about the Isra, Abd, alayhi sallahu bikafin abda, is Allah not sufficient to protect his, his slave, right? So this is how it works in the Quran. So, and then on top of that, <coughs> And then he says, what is called a Rabbuka. So uh, it starts with, and so uh, he is translated as and mentioned. But here the beginning is, what is, and if, so without going into it too deep, what's being said is there's something implied here, which is basically, O oh, Messenger of Allah, recall these incidents. Think about the time in which these things happen, and you'll automatically think, be thinking about all of the incidents, because everything happens within time for us, right? So it's it's like, think in detail, uh, recall in detail about all these things, right? And so then he says, uh, he addresses the Messenger of Allah with, قَالَ رَبُّكَ When your dear loving Lord, right? So in this is tarbiyah, in this is honouring of the Messenger of Allah, in this is a lesson, that you know like of what we owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is done for us is developing us and on top of this <clears throat> is saying that this information you can't figure it out you can't sit on a rock or in a cave and just think about what's going on in the world around you and come to this conclusion you have to hear it through revelation because there's no history doesn't go back that far recorded history so this is what he's saying so it's also proof of his right sallallahu alayhi wasallam 
<coughs> and <coughs> Allah. So obviously there's a lot of honoring of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa in this. He says, and recalls when <coughs> your loving Lord said to, to him, said to the angels, little malaika, right? Malak uh, is in the singular, malaika, plural. One of the positions, I won't go into detail, but one of the positions of the etymology, etymology the root of this word is from uh, aluka, right? It's, it's a flipped, which means it's a message, a risale, right? So the angels are taken from there. In any case, they are beings who cannot disobey Allah. They don't have the, the ability to, they don't have the free will to go and disobey Allah like human beings do. And they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with perfect, complete devotion, right? And <coughs> the majority of them are better than the majority of humanity. And the prophets are better than the greatest of the angels and the awliya are better than, you know, the, the masters of them. Um, <coughs> but, they, but this is it, you know, that... Um, the angels are, are beings of worship. The Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, wa huqqa laha anta The sky, meaning everything that exists, the universe, is creaking. Right? Well, what do you mean creaking? It's like when there's too much, it's something being stuffed, too full. That there's no space, so it's like it's it's giving way at its weakest weakest points. Right? He said that there's not a palm's area anywhere in the whole universe, everything. Right? Where there isn't an angel. You know, in the ruku or in sajda, you know, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So, <clears throat> these these beings, Allah, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does things for a wisdom. That's what we have to understand. Everything that happens in our lives, in the, the world, the way the world works, everything, there's a wisdom behind it, right? And sometimes we can reflect and understand it, and sometimes, you know, we're shown it later, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a wisdom in what He does. So <clears throat> He said, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. I am, so here the translation is, He said, I am, I will make upon the earth a successive authority. So Abu Saud has a very detailed and beautiful breakdown of the, the grammar, grammatical point behind this. And basically, what He's saying is, first of all, ja'ilun, firmly placing on earth, right? Not creating, but He's already been created, but He's placing firmly on earth. For, for this role. So what, what the, how you should understand the verse is I am placing Adam on the earth as a Khalifa, right? The word Adam uh, <coughs> is also, it's, it's connected to, to the word of darkness, like to have like, like a dark skin, right? Udam is also like leather, which is you know, darkened. So, so that's one of the positions that Adam alayhi salatu somewhere had a darker complexion. In the Jayan fil Ardi, so I'm placing Adam on earth as a Khalifa. So a Khalifa, what is the word Khalifa? The, the contemporary scholars have had a lot of discussion around what Khalifa means and, um, you know, a lot of... So the dominant position is a Khalifa is someone who is Allah's representative on earth in applying the commands of Allah, right? Whether it's um, <clears throat> personally or whether it's like a ruler applying them, um, on the uh, in like you know establishing law and judgment right and these things but that's you know it's Allah Sharia uh, to be implemented on earth that is a Khalifa so they can be you know it's it's Adam and his progeny right because the, the whole point is clearly it's not just gonna put Adam there when he when he's he passes away that's it you know mission accomplished no it's Adam and his progeny right is so <clears throat> what happens so there are these narrations that that seem to suggest that. Adam was, uh, no, before Adam there were jinn on earth and you know, and then they were causing corruption this and the other then Allah sent Iblis and the angels who fought them and you know, brought them to heal and and therefore the angels are going to say what they say next. The dominant position is, <clears throat> first it does not, you need to, you need to have, have known that from the Prophet wasallam. the narrations are not sound. What we can understand from the text, you know, and is that Allah created Adam <coughs> and then described him to the angels. I am I created Adam. He's like this, he's like this, he's made from soil, he's, he's got these qualities, he's got free will, he has these strengths and these weaknesses. You know, his children, his, his progeny, they will have these strengths, you know, and there are certain weaknesses. Uh, like weaknesses in resisting physical urges and these sorts of things, all of these things are there, right? And, you know, uh, the, the <coughs> he, you know they can... Um, they have this, they can get angry, they can become arrogant, they can, all of these things are there. 
So he described them. <coughs> and then he said this, I'm placing Adam on earth as a Khalifa. What do the angels say? So, قَالُوا تَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءِ They said, uh, <coughs> will you place upon it one who causes corruption and, there, and therein, uh, corruption therein and, and sheds blood? While we declare your praise and sanctify you. Allah said, indeed, I know what you, that which you do not know. So the angels here, first things first, they're not objecting to Allah. Like, how could you do this? None of that. Second thing, they're not criticizing Adam. Right? Look at him and look at his offspring. Look what they're going to be like. How could you do this? No. So no objection. There's no criticism of Adam. Rather, <clears throat> the question, and this type of question is fine. The, the question is, how come you're placing Adam there? You know, where, you know, him... He might be a prophet, but you know, his offspring, they have these qualities. Uh, are you going? How come you going to put someone on earth? Uh, that's going to cause corruption. Uh, because if you look at most of humanity, <clears throat> they don't believe. And if you look at, you know, people when they put into into positions of power, it shows, right? It shows what's inside. Pharaoh got to the top, and he said, you know, uh, he said that he's, he's God, right? And but had he been, uh, had he been, you know, um, a chef in the kitchen with some, you know, trainee chefs underneath him, he'd have been the same, but on a small, smaller scale. You know, it shows, right? <coughs> They're going to cause corruption. You know, there'll be, you know, all these wars and all this pain, all these things that people will do to each other, right? So what humans do to each other, and you know, all of this, you know, the corruption in the earth will spread throughout the entire earth. And they will shed blood, and it's not just the word shed blood. He used the word the plural. They used Allah expressed what they said with the, the plural word, bloods. So many, many, many different people's blood and different types of blood. So to show you know, the whole, um, you know, slaughter, right? And just look at it. <clears throat> just look at you know World War One, World War Two. That's people doing this, right? And they said you know. Uh, <laughs> I can't resist. Uh, religions, you know, cause wars and, you know, people fight wars and religion. Well, hang on. <laughs> There's no religion, there was ideology. Uh, but, you know, this is the thing. <clears throat> so they're looking at the potential <clears throat> negative aspects, right, of Adam and his progeny. And they're saying, whilst we, وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ While we do, so three things, Tasbih, Hamd and Taqdis, right? Quickly go over them. Tasbih comes from, from a word which is to be far away and to move far and fast. So it's basically saying we declare your transcendence. That you are as far away as from having any sort of faults as possible. Right? You have no blemishes or faults. They declare that. When you say subhanallah, that's what you're saying. Wa bihamdika nusabbihu bihamdi. Wa nahnu nusabbihu bihamdika. We do tasbih and we say alhamdulillah at the same time. What do they say? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Right? So hamd here is praising Allah saying you have every perfection. But it's usually done, <clears throat> it's done because of his own innate perfection. But in this context, what's understood is we praise you out of thanks for your blessings. Right? So they're saying he's, he does have any imperfections. He has, and he's the, you know, the, the accepting and you know, thanking him for his blessings and recognizing them. And we entirely, completely, fully, powerfully, you know, declare your perfection. Right? Taqdis. <coughs> it's, you know, it's, it's Taqdis is a combination, combination of both of the previous ones. Really powerful, right? And so, in like, so they're saying, you know, wouldn't we be a better choice? Right, so you know they haven't said it outright, but that's what they're thinking, and they're saying that you know you're putting him, and they could do this whilst we are just constantly worshiping you, you know. Qala inni a'lamu. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, it's "Indeed, nominal sentence, powerful, starting with inna. Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. I know all that you don't know. Right, so he, I know what you don't know. So the the context here isn't." Allah saying, you only know a little bit and I know an infinite amount, right? It's not saying, <clears throat> it's, it's said, but what's implied is that I know about Adam things you don't know. I know things which make him <clears throat> good enough to be the Khalifa on earth, which you don't yet know, right? So then what happens? It continues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِ هَا أُولَاءِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And he taught 
<clears throat> Adam the names, all of them. Then he showed, him, showed them to the angels and said, inform me of the names of these if you are truthful. So what's happened? <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him the names of all things. All the names, all of them, you could say. But as he just taught the name, so for, for example, for example, as he just said, book, pen, paper, rubber band, no. So the ulama said, and what we understand, so he said, kullaha, for the ha going back to the names, and then for lama arada hum, and when he used this pronoun hum, we understand that it's not just the names, we taught him about the reality of this thing. So this is a book. What is its purpose? What is its function? It's a codex. It's something which contains information. It has pages that go from side to side and, you know, it has information in a sequential form, right? And so he taught him about, he taught him, he showed him, so the, the extent of the things, Allah knows what he showed, right? But huge amounts, right? Uh, he taught him the names, all of them. Things to do in paradise, things in, in the dunya, their effect, their wisdom, their purpose, you know, the things relating to the dunya about these things and the akhirah regarding these things, all of these things. So Adam's been given a vast amount of knowledge. And you have to understand that he's the first human being, he's going to go to earth and this knowledge is going to benefit him, right? You know, farming, tillage, also everything, right? Been given a vast amount of knowledge. <clears throat> uh, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam all, all the names and the realities of things and some of the ulama even go further into expressing spiritual matters that Adam alayhi salatu wasalam things prophets are privy to and the elite of the believers are privy to even those, they all come under this, right? <clears throat> so, um, he taught Adam alayhi salatu wasalam uh, the names, all of them ثُمَّ Right, and then after this, after so a long, you know, there's a long list of them. So thum after this, he <coughs> he demonstrated them. Aradahum, he aradahum. He took uh, instead of the ha, he made it into hum, the pronoun to show its actual objects as well, and he showed all of them, presented them all to the angels. Aradahum ala al malaika to the angels. ثم عرضهم على الملائكة فقال and he said inform me of أنبئوني بأسماء هؤلاء so show them the things and tell me of the names of these things so if you think you know more than him if you think you're better than him if you think you're better suited to the role I'm giving him then do this right and what's happening here Allah سبحانه وتعالى so the angels here realize so it's actually he said first the word ambiuni in ba naba is a consequential it's not a normal piece of information it's something huge amazing powerful consequential right there's a lot of you know significance attached to this right and <clears throat> allah Right, there's a lot of significance attached to this, so Allah uses it in this situation because now, you know, there. What's this? This is a demonstration. Allah is showing them that you know what, you know what your, you know, um, he has qualities. He is suited for this role. You just don't see it, right? And like I said, you know, asking about the wisdom of something is not questioning something. And if far be it for the angels to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather they were asking. So instead of just saying something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided <clears throat> to demonstrate it. And the demonstration uh, makes the message hit home harder, right? So they would really, because now within all of this, everything Allah does, there's wisdom and He knows everything, there's the qadr, everything's planned, right? So he knew one of the tests that he, he had planned was for Iblis to do, uh, he was tell uh, uh, the angels to do a sajda to Adam. So merely telling them and performing the sajda, uh, for the angels performing the sajda, it would have worked, right? They would have obeyed Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala and then and they would have said, okay, he has things that we don't, right? Uh, he has uh, qualities that make him suited to that. But putting them through this gives them a stronger realization that yes you know what he is better suited right 
And the angels are fond of human beings. The angels are constantly asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. They want to come down on Laylatul Qadr, you know. To, so, you know, there, there's something special about human beings, the potential that, we, you know, we have. And the angels recognize this. So, فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِ هَؤُلَاءِ And he said, tell me about the names of these... <coughs> <clears throat> Tell me about the names of these things, uh, of these things. If you're truthful, right? Did they lie? No. But th what they did is they hinted at being better suited, at being the Khalifa on earth. That we, you know, we would do a better job, right? And so, you know, because they said you're putting him, or you're putting someone like this on earth, whilst we do this, we worship you. So they're saying. Look, we're better suited for this. So Allah says, okay, tell me about the names of these things. And uh, so what happens? What do the angels do? The angels say, قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ لَعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ This is so beautiful, right? I was speaking, um, I, I would say, <coughs> the Quran has a beauty so like i said the quran itself the words itself are the miracle are the proof of what it is that is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and someone that understands arabic really in like the arabs the way they understood the quran it was it was self-evident self-evident right <clears throat> but the, then there are beauties and nuances you can pick up through learning and stuff right and this ayah is really amazing what is this they've recognized they've realized yeah, Allah showed them and they knew this but it's it's on a deeper level. It's like um it's like when you're studying some like if you're studying Arabic grammar, right, and uh, you know you make a mistake, you, you know there's the ism anna which is mansub and the khabar uh, anna which is marfu' and let's say you flip it, right? So basically you do something you're not supposed to and you get called out and the teacher says, you know, that's wrong, right? That moment of you realizing, yes, that's wrong, will teach you something deeper than just, I was wrong, you know. It's like that will stick with you and you probably won't make that same mistake again, right? It has a stronger effect. <clears throat> so what do they do? <coughs> they say, Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Beautiful. If you notice, you know, we said this at the beginning as well, and we've seen the, the ulama do this as well. Um, uh, that... Uh, when teaching, you know, <clears throat> it's a recognition that Allah has all knowledge and anything we have is a gift from Allah. Now, look at the humility and look at the way they've lowered themselves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen, what do they say? Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta la alimul hakim. Beautiful. Right? <clears throat> In Tajweed, when you study Tajweed, there's a huruf of isti'la. What does isti'la mean? <clears throat> it's basically where you have to raise the back of your tongue to give this, uh, to give the sound more body, so to say. So you can say qaf, for example, or you can say qaf, qa, qa, right? Qaf, right? Sad, right? So khusa daghdin qil, right? Kha, sad, bad. Ghoin, Qaf, Dha Even the Ra has some isti'la Right? Khusa <coughs> So none of these letters of isti'la are used in this word Right? Qalu Subhan So these are the letters of what they call istifal where the tongue remains neutral and there's no rising sound Qa, Sa, Qamar Right? None of these are there. All that's there are these letters which are pronounced in istifal. These letters that are pronounced in a way which is, you know, there's no rising. So it's just pure humility, humbleness. Qalu subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. So beautiful, right? What do they say? Subhanak, right? You are beyond all sorts of imperfections. Uh, every imperfection you're beyond it. Especially doing something without wisdom, without purpose, arbitrarily and doing something wrong. You're, you're too perfect to do that. So immediately they say, so in, in the sense that they were, they were hinting like, 
No hinting, but they were saying that, you know, where the better choice, therefore Adam is not the right choice. So, Subhanak, you have no faults or flaws. This was not the wrong choice, it's the right choice, right? La ilma lana illa ma allamtina. We possess no knowledge except what you have taught us. What you teach us, that's what we have. Besides that, we don't have anything else. So, <clears throat> And then they say with the nominal sentence, with in a lot of rhetorical devices here, innaka antal. Indeed, without a doubt, you alone are al alim, the one who knows everything, al hakim, the one who possesses absolute wisdom. So you know everything. So you know who's better suited for what, and what you do is surrounded, drowning in wisdom. Right? Things are done in the best way by you in every situation. We were wrong to question that, right? They didn't question the wisdom, but we were wrong to say what we said, to, to even suggest that <clears throat> we might be a better choice, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does He do? So, you don't know these names, but guess who does? Then He says, قَالَ يَا آدَمْ أَنْبِئْهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ Oh Adam, you tell them, right? <coughs> inform them of their names right? show them what qualities I've given you show them the potential that you have show them all of these things right and then they would unba as well in a consequential powerful way so then he does so but Allah he doesn't mention that explicitly but he hints at it in the next word uh, in order to just brevity is importance right in Arabic high good quality speech is brief and when he had told them <clears throat> when he had informed them of their names we asked him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Alam akullakum inni a'lamu ghayb as samawati wal ard did I not say to you that I know all that is unseen all that is not known to you and, and to others all that is unseen <clears throat> in all the heavens and on earth earth being mentioned because earth is important to us but in reality in compared to the size of the universe, the earth is nothing, right? It's you know insignificant in terms of size, but in terms of value and worth, it's huge, right? Because it's the place Allah created for, you know. Imagine <coughs> all these seven skies that have been created in our universe and how massive it is, and Allah chose earth, this one place, and they even knew about it, right? It's not like he, he just mentioned, I'm creating them for, you know, for a planet. Which planet? Where is it? Or, or that one? Okay, why that planet? You know, it was created and it's there for a purpose, right? So, you know, they knew that Earth has been created for a place where people are, where there's going to be a test. And then, <clears throat> he knows the grave of the heavens and the Earth. And I know that which you reveal, that what you, what you were concealing and have concealed, you could say, right? So, he tells Adam, Adam comes and Adam says all of these things, this is this, this is this, this is this, shows his potential, shows that he has the quality of greatness, right, that <clears throat> which make him perfect for this role. <clears throat> then Allah says, uh, did, did I not say to you, I know the what's unseen, things you don't know in the heavens and the earth? And the point here is to firstly primarily establish Allah knows everything, right? Just to get the point home, especially which qualities will make Adam perfect for this role as a Khalifa on earth. Allah knows that and He's showing that, right? And <clears throat> and I know <coughs> that which you ma <coughs> uh, that which you make known, like what you're saying, or you know they're gonna uh, be shedding blood and killing each other and causing corruption. I know this, right? وَأَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Right? And it's so, أَعْلَمُ uh, غَيْبَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضُ وَأَعْلَمُ مَا تُبْدُونَ وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ And I know that which you made clear and what you are, you know, hiding, what you, you, you've been hiding, right? And because they thought, you know, I, you know, we worship were better in, for this role. No. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught them that <coughs> I know why Adam is better. And <coughs> this, these ayat, this coming ayat, the story of Adam in the Quran, there's so much depth to it that you know many of the ulama have written you know tons and tons. And the point of it, it actually comes down to the, the wisdom of creation and why we're here and all of these things. But you know, yes, you know, had the angels been here, it'd been different. 
<coughs> no wars, murder, these sorts of things. But then you have other things. You have people who are in desperate need who go and sacrifice themselves and help others. You have people that devote their lives to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People that are up at night throughout the year, you know, worshipping, praising Him, thanking Him, showing utter devotion and love. People that, you know, would, you know, sell themselves just to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's so many things, right? You know, all the good deeds that the believers do and all the people that are tested with tremendous difficulty but they're patient with that and people who have faced impossible, impossible odds but they have their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and people that grow draw closer to Allah and have this deep intimacy and intimate love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the support of the prophets, you know, from the, their followers and all of these great, huge, mountainous acts of worship had the angels been here, they, they wouldn't have been there. And what makes them great is that they're amidst all of this, you know, the killing and all of the facade on the earth, right? So this is what Allah knew that the angels didn't know, the potential of greatness in Adam والسلام, and his children, right? <clears throat> so we'll continue the story from here, inshallah ta'ala. And we look at what happens when Adam commanded Ibl uh, the angels and Iblis to do a sajda to uh, uh, Allah commands the angels and Iblis to, come to do a sajda to Adam. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب